Hey, how you doing today? My name is Rolia, and thank you so much for stopping by. Today is the second episode of Mythbusters, and in today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at weapon durability. And there are two different ways that I have heard that you can actually increase your weapon's durability once it's close to breaking. The first way is if you have a metal weapon, you can throw it on the ground, and once lightning strikes a weapon, it will reset durability. The second way is to have an Octorok suck up your damaged weapon and it'll spit it back out with full durability. We're going to go ahead and check out both of these methods right now. I've got the Moonlit Scimitar. I've got two of them. And if you see the way that it sparkles in the top right hand corner just a little bit, what that is telling me is that this weapon has full durability, at least as of right now. The first thing we need to do is test out how many swings of durability does this thing have. And then once we get it hit by lightning, well, one, we should see the twinkle just come back if it restores to full durability. And uh, two, I just want to know how many swings does it have after it gets hit by lightning. I want to know if it actually loses durability once it gets hit by lightning. All right, so first thing we need to do is get a baseline test of how many hits our Moonlight Scimitar can take. So let's go ahead and take down some trees. So two hits on the tree, and as you see right there, it does not sparkle. It doesn't have full durability. Just want to prove that that's how that works. All right, three. There we go. So it took 46 hits before the Moonlit Scimitar broke. So we're going to go ahead and load our game. We're going to let it take a little bit of damage and we're going to throw it into some lightning and see if that works. Before you see the final results, let me know down in the comments below. Do you believe that either of these two methods is actually going to restore durability to our weapons? I know for a fact that whiz robes can summon lightning storms, so instead of waiting for one, we're going to head over to the Ridgeland Tower where we can just have the whiz robes summon the thunderstorms for us. I don't know about you guys, but I absolutely hated the Ridgeland Tower when I was first playing Zelda Breath of the Wild. This was the hardest tower, hands down, just because of how much lightning came through here and how the whiz robes could get you from just about anywhere. It was absolutely ridiculous. Like, I could not figure out how to beat these guys for so long. It was so hard to be, like, sneaky through here. Um, but in this case, we actually want the lightning storms, so let's do this. All right, here it comes. So first off, let me put on some armor. That'll make this just a little bit easier. Just a little bit of lightning resist. I don't have uh, everything that I need, but this will help. Because I'm missing the helmet. Now we've got some electric resist. Oh. This scimitar, as you can see, it's not full health. So let's go ahead and take this and put it on the ground. So it is right here. And just so the lightning doesn't hit me, I will de- or unequip this stuff. There we go. So now I don't get hit by those electricity balls. Unless I get hit by it directly, then they'll still do- oh, nope, they don't do damage. Okay. So lightning hits it. Let's see. Is it full? It is not full durability. This one definitely does not have that top right glimmer. So it is not at full durability. We've only hit one thing with this Moonlit Scimitar. So now we're going to cut down some trees and see how much durability this weapon has left. Forty-six hits that time. Uh, was that more than the first time through? I'm gonna have to double check that one. I'm gonna go ahead and call this myth busted. It did not return the Moonlit Scimitar to complete full durability, and two, 
it did not actually do damage to the weapon like I thought it would. I partially thought that we were going to go the other way with this, and the lightning was actually going to do damage to the weapon, but it seems like not so much. For myth number two, I know that if you throw a rusty weapon in front of an Octorok, he's going to suck it up and spit out a clean weapon of the same class. So you might throw in a scimitar and you might get a royal scimitar or you might just get, I don't know, something not as good. Um, but what happens if you use a weapon that is just slightly damaged? Is it actually going to return it back to full durability? I'm not entirely sure, but that's what Mythbusters is here to do. I'm here to check that out. So let's jump right in. So first thing I need to do is get a little damage on this weapon. Maybe I can hit you. I don't think that counts. Nope. Uh, maybe there's a rock or something over here we can bang it against. Why can't I hit my sword on anything? There we go. Alright, so just like that, it is not at full durability, so now we're going to head back over to the Octorok. Alright, so there's an Octorok straight up ahead from where we're at. This Moonlit Scimitar lost just a little bit of damage. I'm going to go ahead and throw this thing right at its feet. It gets sucked in. Where'd it go? Oh, oh there it is. Alright, moment of truth. Let's see if it's got full durability. And just like that, it doesn't have that shine, that sparkle. This myth is busted. We've actually busted both myths today. So as you can see, there is no way to restore your weapons to full durability, at least not that I can tell. Uh, go ahead and leave me a comment down below and let me know if there's any myths that you believe are true in Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild and if maybe you just haven't had a ch chance to test it out or if you think that people just wouldn't believe it, let me know. I'd love to have more myths to bust. Thank you guys so much for stopping by. My name is Relia and I hope to talk to you again more soon.